Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's Saturday morning, and we've got some great guests for you today. At the end of our hour-long broadcast, Bob Loomis with Max Lure Company is going to join us with more tips on catching salmon at Buoy 10 this month and at the bottom of the hour we'll have the pleasure of chatting with Dell Stevens the man behind the Oregon Tuna Classic the Deep Canyon Challenge out of El Waco is taking place this weekend but there is still time to register for the Garibaldi tournament on August 24th and 25th and Dell's going to give you all the details about that and also answer the question many of you have today where are the tuna right now before we talk to Dell and Bob, though, it's time once again to tell you what's hot. Right here in the Pacific Northwest, brought to you every week by your local Sportsman's Warehouse stores in Everett, Silverdale, Puyallup, and Federal Way. And there are seminars going on at all of these stores to include one that's all about binoculars at the Everett store on Monday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. And another one that's going to cover the basics of trail cameras at the Silverdale store. That one's next Saturday from 5 to 6 p.m. These seminars are free and you'll walk away a smarter sportsman and consumer for attending. One thing that's as hot as the weather is the soccer eye bite near Brewster on the upper Columbia River. That's been very hot the last two weeks with lots of happy anglers limiting or getting close to it. This is definitely an early morning fishery. It's pretty well over by 8 a.m. and it's not going to last much longer, so you might want to get there sooner than later. Continuing with salmon, there are two derbies coming up soon near Astoria. The first is the Northwest Sport Fishing Industry Association's annual salmon challenge. The captain's meeting for that that is on the 16th, and you'll fish on the 17th. The big fish will net a winner $1,000, and there's a $1,100 mystery weight fish prize, too. You can get your tickets for that at nsiafishing.org. And if you're a lady, you'll want to stick around and fish one more day. August 18th is the day of the first annual Lipstick Salmon Derby. The third place prize for this one is $1,000, and the first place prize for the big fish, that's a $4,000 paycheck. You can find out more about this derby, only open to the fairer sex, by going to LipstickSalmonSlayer.com. Turning from salmon to warm water fish, if you're in the mood for perch, which are pretty darn tasty, you may want to head to Sawyer Lake in King County. That's what one poster on NorthwestFisherReports.com did last weekend. He and a buddy enjoyed a hot bite between 7.30 and 10.30 a.m., and they caught nearly 50 fish, most of them perch with some catfish and pumpkin seed thrown in. They ended up keeping 16 perch measuring 8 to 11 inches, perfect eater size. Heading just east to Snoqualmie Pass, another poster shared his results from a kokanee fishing expedition at Lake Cachise. He didn't have a whole bunch of time to fish, but he did catch eight kokanee, measuring 10 to 12 inches with the time he did have. He was trolling a teardrop-style dodger and a shrimp fly hoochie in hot pink. He tipped that with shrimp and gulp maggots. The fish were hitting between 30 and 90 feet down in the water column. Finally, from Mardon Resort, we can report the bass fishing in the dunes of Potholes Reservoir has been very good for anglers using topwater lures early in the morning and into the evening. Evening, and another lure to use, square build crankbaits. Walleye fishing was tough last week, though they were finding a few in the dunes. And trout fishing remains surprisingly good, and the trout are big too. If you need a place to stay while you're fishing Potholes Reservoir, look no further than Mardon Resort. So there you have it, your weekly roundup of what's hot right here in the Pacific Northwest. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation. Are you an outfitter, sporting goods retailer, boat dealer, or someone else in the outdoors industry? If you are, you know targeted advertising works best. And what would work better than advertising with America Outdoors Radio? Our hour-long show is heard throughout Seattle, Everett, and the East Side every Saturday morning. And your message will be heard there, too. Want to find out more? Contact me, John Cruz, through my website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. It doesn't matter what sort of adventure you're after. 
Whether it's big game deep in the backcountry, a day of fishing out in the water, or an overnight in the great outdoors. At Sportsman's Warehouse, we've got the gear in here for what you need out there. Gear up for your next adventure at one of its Sportsman's Warehouse stores or shop online. Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Log on today. Are you an outfitter, sporting goods retailer, boat dealer, or someone else in the outdoors industry? If you are, you know targeted advertising works best. And what would work better than advertising with America Outdoors Radio? Our hour-long show is heard throughout Seattle, Everett, and the East Site every Saturday morning, and your message will be heard there too. Better still, our rates are way more affordable than you think. Want to find out more? Contact me, John Cruz, through my website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. That's America Outdoors Radio, bringing you more business. Need to get away? Then head to Mardon Resort in sunny central Washington. The fishing's awesome, wildlife is everywhere, and Mardon is the perfect place to swim, boat, and soak up the sun. When the day is done, hang out at the beach bar and grill or head to your tent, RV, hotel room, or fabulous park cottage. Call 1-800-416-2736 to book now. That's 1-800-416-2736 for Mardon Resort. Natural wonders, beaches and coves, majestic forests and scenic vistas are waiting for you at the Tillamook Coast. Lace up your hiking boots, grab your camera, and come to Northwest Oregon. Find out more at TillamookCoast.com. Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. Next, we're taking you to Garibaldi on the northern Oregon coast because the Oregon Tuna Classic is going to have one of their derbies there August 24th and 25th. The person here to tell you more about it is the organizer, Dell Stevens. Dell, great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks, John. First things first, are the tuna in? Are they close? Are they within range for the anglers who are going to go after them this month? Yes, they are in. They're right around 60, 65 miles right now. We're expecting to move in a little closer. All right. So August 24th and 25th, the Oregon Tuna Classic at Garibaldi. Why don't you go through the rules and the prizes very briefly? You bet. Anglers have to turn in five fish to qualify for the prizes, and the top prize is $6,000, and there's side pots that they could win as much as fifteen to $20,000. We have captain's raffles where we give away a lot of product to just the registered teams, and then during the evening, we'll also have a live auction that'll have guns, pistols, uh, fishing trips, exotic trips to other nice places. Well, this sounds like all sorts of fun. So is the dinner on the 24th and the fishing on the 25th or vice versa? Nope, it's uh, fishing on the 25th and dinner on the 25th. There will be a brief captain's meeting um, on the 24th and some snacks that evening. All right. And is there still room if people want to sign up and participate? There is still room. They can go to OregonTunaClassic.org and click under the, um, the tournaments and go down to registrations. They will not want to miss General Wilson singing the national anthem. He'll raise the hair on the back of your neck. Sing the national anthem for NBA Finals Game 3. Wow. All right. That does sound impressive. One other thing that's very impressive uh, that happened to the Oregon Tuna Classic is where all the tuna goes. Why don't you tell our listeners about that? Yes. uh, This will be the 14th season now, and after 13 years, we now have given over 1.5 million pounds of food to the hungry people of Oregon and Southwest Washington. That is a fantastic, fantastic purpose that you've got there. Again, folks, it's the Oregon Tuna Classic. You're going to be fishing for a good cause. You're going to be helping people with the tuna that you catch. You also have a shot of winning some good money, and you're going to have a great time. The website, one more time, Dell. OregonTunaClassic.org. That's OregonTunaClassic.org. Thanks, Dell, and good luck. Thanks, John. A seafood bounty is waiting for you on Northwest Oregon's Tillamook Coast. Catch a limit of big salmon, haul up a pot of delicious crab, and dig up a bunch of clams for some hot chowder. Plan your visit today at TillamookCoast.com. 
Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Oh, yes. It is that time again. It's time for a Max Minute, and it's time to talk to Bob Loomis from Max Lure Company. Welcome back, Bob. Thanks, Sean. So last week, we talked about what to use bait-wise and lure-wise when it comes to catching some of those Chinook and Coho at the world-famous Buoy 10 Salmon Fishery on the mouth of the Columbia. But we didn't have time to talk about what to put in front of that bait. What would you recommend in terms of an attractor or a flasher? Well, you know, as far as attracting fish from distances, you're trolling a little bit faster than you would be like the sockeye fisheries or the kokanee fisheries, things of that nature. So trolling a little bit faster when you're up in that two mile an hour range, you really need something that gives you movement and adds or attracts from far away. Our sling blade, our nine inch sling blade is absolutely perfect for that. It's longer, narrower, and you get a lot of movement out of it the faster you go. Now, there are a lot of flashers and dodgers and attractors on the market. What separates this one from the rest of the pack? Well, this one is is an actual dodger itself. It's not a flasher where you're rotating a five-foot diameter circle as you're pulling. It has a lot less drag and it actually moves the, moves the bait quite a bit. So I can go to a little bit shorter leader than I would on a flasher and get that, that movement as well as the major attraction. When it comes to colors, does it matter at buoy 10? You know, when it comes to colors, you know, any type of salmon fishery, everybody's got their own, their own thought process. I like high UV colors, period. Not just green? Not just green. <laughs> All right. We will leave it at that. The attractor to use at Buoy 10 and lots of other salmon fisheries as well is the Sling Blade. You can find it at maxlure.com or at quality sporting goods stores near you to include Sportsman's Warehouse. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. The Sling Blade is Max Lure Company's latest dodger for you to use. Lance Burrs is with us from Max Lure Company to tell you more about it. Why are you so excited about the Sling Blade? Versatility, John. You can bend the Sling Blade and change it from a reactionary bite to a normal bite, and it's got so many possibilities. Not only that, it comes in different sizes. You can use the Sling Blade for everything from trout and kokanee all the way to ocean-going salmon. It's the Sling Blade. Look for it at MaxLure.com. 